we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Today we're talking about how to fight for the crown of life. In the last message, I talked about fight for the crown of life. Today we want to do a continuation. How do you fight for the crown of life? Let us pray. Lord, energize us today. Teach us how to fight. Take away our weaknesses. Keep us focused on the crown. Help us to attain the position you have purchased for us when you shed your blood on the cross of Calvary. Today we ask that you cause your word to pierce through every part of our hearts and cause us to be refined by the fire of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How to fight for the crown of life. Let's look at the test. And before we read, please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe, comment, and like this video to help the algorithm recommend this video to other people. And also, please, kindly share this video with other people. And not just that, too. We will appreciate it if you support us in anything, no matter how small. Please support us. Whatsoever thing you give is what we use in running our ministries and also financing our charity organization and the good lord will bless us all in jesus name amen i also want to appreciate as many who have been supporting us and keeping us afloat may god never forget your sacrifices in jesus name amen let's look at the text first timothy chapter 6 verse 12 fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Let's also look at the next verse, the next Bible verse. James 1 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Today we want to look at several ways through which we can fight the fight for our crown. How can we fight for the crown of life? Remember if you watch the message I did before now, before this one, I talked about I I I did a lot of explanation and built the foundation for this message. So please, I don't want to go back to that message and start repeating what the crown of life is and the rest of the things I've already said before. But I just want to dive in straight into the message. And there are nine things I have listed. I'm going to read a couple of Bible verses today. Uh, when you hear that you should fight for the crown of life, the question is, how How do I fight for the crown of life? In case you are not aware, I have listed some things out here, and I want to read them. There are nine in number, and then I'll take some time to explain each and every one of them. The number one here is build a strong foundation in God's word. Two. Abide in Jesus Christ and He in you. 3. Develop a strong and consistent prayer life. 4. Be led by the Spirit. 5. Endure temptation. 6. Fellowship with other believers. 7. Keep your eyes on the eternal prize. 8. Don't be tired of well doing. 9. Lay your treasures in heaven so we're going to be looking at these points one after the other so let's look at number one 
build a strong foundation in God's word. Let's read the two passages I have here. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Psalm 119 verses 11 and 19. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. 19. I am only a strange, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Let's look at these Bible verses. Number one, Romans 10, verse 17. Faith. You need faith to be able to navigate through the terrains of this world. If you don't have faith, your spiritual life is not going to survive the storms of life. How do you get faith? It is by hearing by the word of God. As you hear the word of God from time to time, you grow your faith. So you need to have a deep understanding of how the scripture, of how the kingdom works, the constitution of the kingdom, you need to read the word of God, understand the wiles of the devil, the love of God, the loss of God, the grace of God, how he operates. You need to have in-depth knowledge of God's word. And not just that too, we are strangers in this world. It is the word of God that is a map that helps us to navigate through the path of this world. So if you don't have the word of God, it's going to be very, very disastrous for you to continue to fight for the crown of life. A lot of people give up because they don't have the knowledge of the truth. The word of God is very important. Remember when Jesus Christ was tempted, the three times he was tempted in the wilderness, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, it was the weapon of the word he used against the devil. Three good times he quoted the word of God. So if you don't have the word of God, what are you going to quote? What are you going to use to counter temptation? The word of God is very, very important. So the question is, how many of you study God's word? It's not about listening to prophecies and time revelations. Read the word of God. Listen to Bible studies. A lot of people don't care about Bible study anymore, but Bible study is a time you ask questions, you look into the Word of God in depth, you analyze things. Excuse me. You analyze things. So if you don't attend Bible studies, it's, it's not a good thing. I remember in church, a lot of people don't like to attend Bible studies. Like when the Bible study comes before the main service, a lot of people don't come. They only come, it's a tradition to come only when the Bible study is taking place. But thank God for some good believers who understand the importance of God's word. They are always available. They make sure that they partake in the Bible study. A lot of Christians don't know the importance of God's word, but many have understanding of how powerful the word of God is and they go for it no matter how expensive books are or how tight their shed schedule is they, they do the best they can to go for the word of God let's go to number two abide in Jesus Christ and he in you abide in the word of God abide in the word and do the word. Be led by him. John 15 verse 1. I am the vine. And my father is the husband man. John 15 verse 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. We have to abide in Christ. Jesus Christ in verse 1, he says, he is the vine. The father is the, is the vine dresser and we are the branches. 
So if, if a branch of a tree is tired of the stalk of the main tree, it's when it's cut off, it withers. Because there will be no way for that branch to get support, nutrition, nourishment. There will be no way. A lot of these Christians feel that they can do it on their own. The truth is that when we are saved, the Lord journeys with us. He doesn't dump us anywhere to struggle on our own. It is a journey that He takes with us until we are crowned. He is always with us. Remember what He said to the disciples. He said, If I go, the Comforter will come. He said, I will send you another Comforter. He is a Comforter. The Holy Spirit is the other Comforter who will be with us and journey with us. Remember, one of the names, the titles of Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God with us. So He's always with us. And we must also make sure that we journey with him too. A lot of Christians don't want to journey with the Lord. Some, they want him to, they want the Lord to follow them everywhere. But they go to places the Lord will not go with them. So it's not just him abiding in you. You also need to abide in him. You have to obey him. You have to be led by the Spirit. You have to live under the government of the Lord. You have to make him your Lord and personal Savior. Abide in him. This is one of the strongest ways to fight for your crown of life. If you are not in him, you will be prone to temptation, prone to attacks. But if you are in him and he is in you, if you live in him and he lives in you, no power of hell can ever touch you. So oh, let's talk about the third one. Develop a strong and consistent prayer life. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Wash and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying always without prayer and supplication in the spirit and washing thereon too without perseverance and supplication for all the saints. For all saints. Prayer is very, very important. Prayer is a weapon with which we fight. We use prayer to quench the fiery darts of darkness. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Please don't get carried away. If you must fight, you have to be a prayerful Christian. Develop a consistent prayer life. There are, even in Judaism, there were hours of prayers, worships, where Christians go and pray. Even Jesus Christ practiced the same. If Jesus Christ who is all-powerful, who came in human flesh, in human form, prayed. Sometimes he would pray throughout the night if he fasted and prayed. But what about you? Please, we are in a battlefield. Have this understanding. Every point in time, remind yourself that we are in a war in this world and we need to develop a consistent and strong prayer life. And not just that, also develop the lifestyle of fasting. Fast. Even if it is once in a week. Fast. At the beginning of the month. As you cross over, as you round off the month to cross over to the next month. Fast and pray. It is very, very important. Do not overlook these keys. If you want to fight and succeed, don't overlook any of these. Then number four, be led by the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. 
Then I, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Follow the ways of the kingdom. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Follow the word of God. Walk in the spirit. Be submissive to the Holy Spirit. Hear him. Be obedient to him. Follow, follow the laws of God. Follow the path of righteousness and bear the fruits of righteousness. The fruits of repentance. Walk by the spirit so that you don't get carried away by the flesh. There is a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. So by the time you walk, if you walk consistently by the spirit, if you walk in the spirit, you discover that you become strong. Some of the things that usually entice you, they will no longer be able to draw your attention. This is very, very important. Then the next one is endure temptation. Number five, James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is a man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised him. I promise to them that love him. Endurance is very important. I say this from time to time, that it is the same God who performs instant miracles. That same God could wait and see our reaction. Let me ask you a question. When your teacher is teaching you, he is talking, he is demonstrating, is showing you things. What about when he gives you tests? Does he talk or he just sits and waits for you to submit your script? That is how it is too. In this race, we grow from one class to the other. There are different classes. We graduate. Even though we don't throw any party, we graduate from one class to the other. And as we continue to grow in the spirit, there are things that help us to grow. Try us, they come our ways. But one good instrument you need, one good weapon you need to survive is endurance, perseverance. You have to endure. Today, a lot of people no longer want to endure. Endurance is dying off. Even in the normal world, people don't want to stay on the queue anymore. People don't want to uh, um, sacrifice their time. Everybody wants it now and now. In this digital world where everything is becoming automated, everybody wants it now. Let me tell you, there is nothing like automation in the spirit world when it comes to facing trials exercise your faith when your faith is put to test what you need to survive one of the things you need is perseverance why is it that we're having a lot of divorce today even among christians they are divorcing every now and then the, the rate of divorce is so high. As a matter of fact, I heard one so-called prophet saying, if your wife wants to, uh, wants to keep controlling you, divorce her. Divorce her, let her go. <laughs> but people change. <laughs> it's, it's so funny that many of these uh, so-called miracle workers are trying to put the body of Christ into trouble. He said, divorce her. Divorce her. If he wants to control you, divorce her and move on. No woman should control you. I laughed. So where is the place of endurance? Oh, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. I can't take it again. I'm done. 
you know, I, I listened to a woman who was talking. I, I took my time to watch a video. She said she got married to the best man ever in the world, but she lost him. She said, I don't think I will be able to get this kind of husband again. She was regretting her actions. Imagine, I, I can't actually remember if it was the woman that divorced the man that left the man or the man that left the woman. But imagine a situation that it was a man that divorced the woman and now the woman, a few years later, the woman realized her mistakes and start living like a humble and Christian woman. People change. Even God himself is very patient with us. God is patient with us, but many of us don't want to be patient. So you see a lot of divorce everywhere, even among Christian leaders. Patience is dying. No, please wake up your faith. When you meet with trials, when you meet with temptations, cry to the Lord and wait for him. When you pray and you have not received, please be patient. Remember Abraham, remember Sarah, they waited, but when they made a mistake of going into Hagar, you see the consequences that we are facing today. Please be patient, patiently wait for him. Don't be carried away by miracles. Be very very patient wait patiently upon god and all those who wait on who wait upon him will never be put to shame he said in his word that hope shall not disappoint us look at job look at job and how he ended up please learn from him then let's talk about fellowship Fellowshipping with other believers. Fellowship is very, very important. It is powerful. Unfortunately, from since 2020 to date, a lot of people have not resumed. Lockdown is over, but they are still following online. Please get back to church in person. It is important. Fellowship is important. Don't say it is not important. Let's look at the word of God. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. As a manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Fellowship is very, very important. Please fellowship with other believers. When you come with your burden in your heart and you worship, you fellowship with other believers, like-minded believers, some weight will be lifted from your heart. Please mingle with other believers. Hear their testimonies. Hear the word of God. Iron sharpened iron. Do not forsake the assembling of the brethren. I know you are a strong believer, but please, fellowship is very important. Do not exclude yourself. If you have firewood burning, and you remove one, if you isolate one, is a matter of time to go off. That's what's happening to some believers. They have isolated themselves. We are to live in community as believers. Do not isolate yourself. I also want to also acknowledge some situations whereby some believers are in places where there are no genuine churches. I did a video some time ago where I talked about 
I talked about serving God where there is no church or no genuine church. What are you supposed to do? Thank God for the internet today. But you can also create form a church, a fellowship. I'm not talking about uh, registering a church. That is not the church I'm talking about. Have a fellowship. The church is the gathering of God's people. It is not a denomination. It is not a building. So gather like-minded believers and start worshiping God. You may not have a pastor, but there are templates you can follow. Start a fellowship and grow yourselves. And you know what? Jesus is right there with you because wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, he is right there with them. So do not overlook assembly of the brethren. Then number seven, keep your eyes on eternal, on the eternal prize. Keep your eyes fixed. Philippians 3 verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Fix your eyes on him. Steadfastly, Fix your eyes on the prize so that you don't get distracted. Let's focus on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Do not focus on the troubles in the world. Focus on the victory. Focus on the prize. When you are suffering, focus on victory. When you are tilling, the ground and you are planting, it is because you want to reap. When you are within your farm, when you are protecting your crops from being invaded by rodents and pests and different kind of things, it is because you have the hope of harvesting. If you lose hope, you could get discouraged. Remember, we're talking about how to fight for the crown of life. Then again, don't be tired of well doing. This is very important. It is practical. You don't need to be tired of well doing. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, if we do not faint, we will reap. Verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Yes, let us not get tired of doing good. When you do good, as you do good to people, you are shining the light of Christ. It is a way of keeping yourself focused. That is why I I brought this close to the last one. Lay your treasures in heaven. Lay your treasures in heaven. It will help you to be focused on the prize. It is a very good way of fighting for the crown of life. Lay your treasures in heaven. Don't lay all your treasures in this world. Where your treasures are, there your heart will be also. It is the way you understand life that you will live it. It is your understanding about life that takes to you how you live your life on earth. If you have this understanding that your reward is in heaven, you will do good to people. You would know that, okay, whatsoever thing I'm doing, I will reap one day. Are you fighting for the crown of life? Please fight. Fight for the crown of life. Do not give up on your faith in God. Keep fighting. Keep moving. 
if you are falling, please rise up. Look at what 2 Corinthians 4 verse 70 says, For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us, as a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whatsoever thing we pass through here is light. Something huge is awaiting us. Remember all the points I mentioned. Number one, I said build a strong foundation in God's word. Two, abide in Jesus Christ and he in you. Three, develop a strong and consistent prayer life. Four, be led by the Spirit. Five, endure temptation. Six, fellowship with other believers. Seven, keep your eyes on the eternal prize. Eight, don't be tired of well-doing. Nine, lay your treasures in heaven. Remember what Matthew chapter 6, verses 19, 20 and 21 says, Lay your treasures in heaven. Be very, very focused. When you have no plan B, you will put in all your best and make sure that you don't fail. Some of us have plan B and some of us our plan B is enjoyment in this world. That, okay, let me just enjoy to the fullest. <laughs> How many years do you have here? It doesn't worth it. If your enjoyment comes between you and your eternal salvation, please give up that enjoyment. It doesn't worth it. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for your word. Help us to fight the good fight of faith. Teach us how to fight. There are many who are overwhelmed with so many troubles. Father, please go into their situations. Remember as many who are suffering right now in the U.S., in different states where the hurricane Helen has affected, Lord, we ask that you go and fight for them. Go and save them. Lord, those who have been displaced, we ask that your help will go to them. We pray for Israel that is at war. Lord, help your nation. Help the land of Israel in the name of Jesus. We also pray for Ukraine. We pray for as many countries, Russia, that are fighting wars. We pray for the citizens in Gaza and Lebanon. Lord, help your people deliver your people, especially those of the household of faith. Let bloodshed cease in the name of Jesus. Give peace to our world. Let there be peace. We are thrown the peace of peace over our nations right now in the name of Jesus. Let the flow of blood cease. Pray for the U.S. elections. Lord, help us. Destroy every power that wants to rig the elections. You told me that the case of Didi, he said, you asked the question, he said, why is it coming up now? It is because they want to distract people. They want to rig this election. Lord, prove yourself. Help us this day. Give your protection to your people, especially Donald Trump, who is at the war front. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. We pray for us many who have been supporting our ministries, those who have been giving from time to time, and those who are willing to give, but they don't have. And those who don't have, Lord, bless your people abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this message, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to like and comment so that you can help this video go far. Thank you and God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.
bless you.